You know, I just did, well, 25 years ago, I made an album called Cool Blue Halo that was my first solo album, and it was done at a club here called The Bottom Line in New York. I love The Bottom Line. Yeah, we love it. it was, they, that was a total, like, it's anything NYU goes. NYU now. <laughs> yeah, I, know. I know. Where I'm a professor, so I can't really complain too much about um, it. NYU, I always say, is the school that <laughs> ate New York. It, it does seem to eat a lot. It does. Yeah. But, but it you know, feeds a lot, too. I love my department. I'm with the Clyde Davis department, and oh, I love wow. what we do there, so I can't complain. But yeah, they... The school did take the bottom line. Well, that was theirs anyway. They were leasing it. Right. So, so they took it back. They took like it Indian back. Givers, right? <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, they had it a long time. But it was a great club, and we did. I did a lot of shows there. Wow. I saw David was, Essex there. David Essex was awesome. Rock on. You remember that? Oh, I, yeah. No, I didn't see him there, but Rock on. 16. I was too young for that. Oh, but, you know, but, you know, I wasn't. I was always like <laughs> just kidding. crashing yeah. everything. I saw Mary Ann Faithful. One of my favorites. Yeah. yeah. I saw the bongos at the bottom line. Really? And there was somebody sitting next to me, and he pointed up and said, that's my brother up there. Really? Wow. Yeah. That's a lot. Do you have a brother? Yeah, but he wasn't there. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> People, uh, people, uh, people, uh, people yeah. always say that my relatives, and then, you know, some, if I can, if I take a look, I can sometimes say yes or no and make a choice, but um, that was not true. Okay. <laughs> I, I wasn't sure, but now, now I know. I like the story, though. I, I, I like the story. Now I know. Yeah. Yeah. That, was, that was early 80s, so. Yeah. No. Yeah. <laughs> it, would, it would have been mid-80s for the bottom line Okay, maybe mid-80s. Yeah. Okay. We didn't really, we avoided any venues that had seats. We Bongos wore a dance group when we played, like, yeah. the Brits. I worked at the Ritz. The Ritz was awesome. Places that had a big dance floor, uh, that's where we liked to play. You know, Urban Plaza, yeah. things like that. And then uh, later, like we were compelled to play theaters, which we did, and that, that's when we played the bottom line. Yeah. Yeah, well, the bottom line and the Ritz are totally different. Very different, mm -hmm. but both fun in their own way. Yeah, yeah. totally. And the Once bottom line gave me a lot of leeway to create shows. That's how the Google Halo came around. Will you find mine? Chair. Okay. Totally okay. That's fine. Uh, so, uh, so, John and Paul. Yeah. Sure you that works. Well, this one? No, it's fine. You can talk too. No. <laughs> Thank you. And who is she then? Um, George? You could be, you could be, you could be Ringo. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Ringo. Ringo has an art show on the Bowery right now. Ringo's on the road all the time, too. I know. He looks amazing, that Ringo. Yeah. yeah. So, what are you doing today? Today, I'm just with you. I know, but I mean in art form. Well, I do, I'm doing a lot of things. I produce artist records. I'm in the middle of finishing an album that's been in the works for a while. It's a beautiful record. An artist uh, that I've been producing for two years called Tracy Stark. She's a songwriter, and she has different amazing uh, artists singing her songs. It's like a songbook. She has Leslie Gore, who's doing one, Nona Hendricks from LaBelle, uh, Anne Hanson Calloway, Jane Monheim from sort of the Jazz Cabaret World. Um, it goes on and on. Every, every artist is like a supreme. Wow. Amazing artist, Randy Jones of the Village People. I mean, he's I a man. Him. He's adorable. He's a great guy. So anyway, this album's coming out uh, in the summer. So I'm just finishing it up in this in the next few days. And by Friday, we're turning that in. So that's my current wow. finishing up project. That's huge. But you know, I, like I said, I'm a teacher. So the spring is a lot of the uh, spring semesters about teaching the class. I do called stage presence. Interesting. Is it for acting or for music? It's music. It's Clyde Davis. Davis Institute. Yeah. So it's it's stage presence for rappers and artists, and we, we just find a stage presence for them, literally, an actual persona presence. You know. Wow. So what do you tell somebody to be? No, to be themselves. Right. To bring it out. Everything I can get out of them is themselves. It's them. Is what I try to get out. Right. You know, and whatever style it is, make that 
as much as I can get out of it so you can't miss it. Now they have to be going to NYU to, to get that insight from you, so they already have like some kind of something to be in the Clive Davis program. They have to audition too. Right. It's a big process. The Clyde Davis Department only has now, the biggest class we've ever had is 48 students. I think that's the biggest we've ever had. It's only been like 30. And they thousands, maybe a couple thousand will audition to be in the department. Right. And they only pick like 40-ish, you know. So it's, they're pretty good. And they're all different. You know, there's like, a, you know, singer-songwriter, a lot of rap, a lot of rap artists, hip-hop, um, jazz, and you know, everything. And what's the percentage of these people breaking through? I think it's pretty good. I think NYU always has that in. I think it's very good. You know, I, I've, st I've seen several students that have taken my class who have major label deals. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. That's and they're great. They are great. And they're unique artists. You know, we just try to get the uniqueness out. That's amazing. So do you practice what you preach? <laughs> it makes me better when I go on stage because I perform a lot. I'm on the road all the time. And you know, after I talk to the class, it makes me remember, I better do that or I better do this because I just told somebody they gotta do it. Like know? do what? Be you. Oh, yeah. Because you gotta just be you in every way you can. Like you let loose. Yeah. And you have to find that place, you know, where you can just let it happen. Yeah, I always feel like when I'm performing, I always feel naked with my clothes on. Well, that's why my, my that's exactly how she should that's be. That's how I always feel. Well, sometimes I make it with my clothes off. <laughs> you do? Yeah. Like, you're a little oh, stuffy my. right now. You have a tie oh. and everything. <laughs> it comes off, it's in a gift wrap. So it is George Michael's birthday today. Did you know that? Well, I'm not going there. <laughs> <laughs> I know better than that. I like, as an artist, I really like his, a lot of his work. You know? yeah. He's a good singer, really great. But I was saying about like my, I did a book called, that's how I got my professorship. I was, um, I wrote a book called Front Man, and on the cover I'm new. You know, so Nick Rock did yeah. the cover. And um, it's a lot of nudity in that book, actually. Like everything? Like, yeah. like it's all showing? Or are you covering up? Well, it's a textbook now, so it's shadowed. But it's not like uh, Red Hot Chili Peppers? It's not like with the sock? I, I, I threw the sock off. Yeah. Really? I love the Red Hot Chili Peppers book, and I saw them perform at Maxwell's in Hoboken in that way, in that, on those outfits. Yeah. The tube socks, yeah. yeah. Amazing. So they were being you, them. They were being them. Right, that's what I Awesome. Came. Right, yeah, exactly. That's what I expect of an artist, you know? Yeah, I mean, why not, I right? Mean, you, you think I look stuffy today because I have a time? I'm just kidding. <laughs> no, you look very, very, you look very professional. Well, you know, the fun is taking it off. Oh, I'm not going to do it here. You like Gypsy? Yeah. Yeah, it's all right. With the um. That's oh, a little ridiculous for me. Really? But I know it's the world's greatest musical. I'm just not really into musicals of that type. You know? Really? So what musicals do you like? Did you like Rent? I worked with Michael Greif after Rent. We did a show, Bright Lights, Big City, for the New York Theatre Workshop. And I got to see Rent a lot, and I got to appreciate Rent. Yeah, I liked it. Do you like... What do you like? You know, I like West Side Story. And I got, again, this one with Rita Moreno, and she taught me a lot about the filming of the movie version, and then I totally loved it. And really loved it. You know the writer of that said that he, that was his most hated play. Really? That was Romeo and Juliet. The rest of that story. No, I know, I know the story, but Sondheim said that, that was his, he never expected that to become anything. I recently read that somewhere, that that was the one that he liked the least. It might be true, you know, you never know. You don't, right? I love, I love musicals, I love West Side Story. You know what, I really do, I like musicals, it's just that it gets to be, sometimes there, you know, the, the, some aspects of it I'm not crazy about, like the Gypsy. I love Gypsy. I, I saw it with Bernadette Peters a few years ago, uh, on Broadway, it's pretty cool. I only saw the movie, so I mean, I can't remember. It's good on the stage. Yeah. It's good on the stage. What, what do you think of all these rock and roll revival uh, Broadway shows? Yeah, you know, like Jersey Boys. And, yeah. Rock I like New Jersey Boys. I was at opening night in Jersey Boys, and I thought it was pretty cool. Yeah. I haven't seen Clint Eastwood's movie version yet, though. Nope, haven't seen that yet. But I thought that was a good a good story. I liked all the mob stuff in that one. Yeah. You know? Yeah. And um, a, you know, a friend of mine wrote uh, Hedwig and the Angry Inn. Ah. Oh. 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 Have you seen the play? Oh my god, I, I saw it with uh, John Cameron Mitchell many times, like about eight times. Jan Tilly, who's been in it, was on the yeah. show a couple weeks ago. Yeah, I mean, Hedwig is... It's a great piece. It's a great piece of theater. So I, I do, you know, when I say I don't like musicals, that's not true at all. I do like musicals sometimes. Right. 
Yeah. And I, I'm, I don't care. And I also go by my mood. Like, it's a mood thing, you know? Yeah, I just don't know if they, I mean, Hedwig is like one of the, I feel Hedwig is so spectacular because I don't think it's it's so easy to make a musical today. Yeah. And that was cool, especially when it was at the Jane Street Theater and yeah. it was like in this small house and, you know, uh, Hedwig would jump on someone and, you know, in the audience and that kind of activity was really yeah. cool, you know? Yeah. Um, and it seemed like you were going to see some CD kind of thing. Yeah, it wasn't so detached like theater can be. I like the reality of just being in a place and you're in a club and the band is playing in a club and it's this, it's exactly with the venue that they're describing. Mm -hmm. You're in it. And the bar's there, you know what I mean? Yeah. So, so how did you break in and get so successful and like so spectacular? Like well, like what was your route from this like a kid? Like did you there was no American Idol and all that stuff. Like how'd you do it? I was a really pushy kid. I got my own radio show in 07. Aww. Where? In Tampa? Yeah, Tampa, Florida, W A L T A M one about eleven ten. Uh, it was a top 40 station, and I went up to a DJ at a live event, I said, I can do that. I was seven, and I got the job. I started doing my Sunday show called Beach Party. So what would you play? I played the more 60s, late 60s hard rock and stuff. But it was more top 40s. It was, it was the beginning of like Power Trio, but you know, I remember playing Cream, and I was really into Donovan Records. Yes. Who then later, I brought, yeah, awesome, and I later got to work with him too. One of my most fortunate things in life for me has been that I get to work with so many of my heroes. And Donovan was one, Pete Seeger, I got to produce his last single, Lou Reed. Um, just amazing how these are the people when I was growing up who I looked up to so much and I've gotten to work with them. So it's been an honor. Wow, that's amazing. So was it since you moved here to New York or? I started in Florida because I started producing, I, my first other artist other than myself that I worked with in the studio was Tiny Tim. Oh, I love <laughs> Tiny Tim, I love Tiny Tim. I produced his album called I've Never Seen a Straight Banana. I was 16 like that, yeah, and it's a good, really good record too, because Tiny Tim was a musicologist who would find obscure songs of different eras and like re, you know, kind of bring them out, and he taught me a lot about pop music. When you talk about pop culture, you know, they, you know, we, I think of it as from the Beatles on, and he's saying, hey, saying, wait a minute, there's Edison cylinders when they, you know, it's like it's this, we're talking early you know, 1900s. And he taught me songs from then, and that's what that album is about. I've never seen a straight banana. The title song is from 1921 or something, I think. Wow. Yeah. No, you can't be Tiny Tim successful and not have talent. I mean, he was no, much more. Yeah, that's what I mean. He, People he, take it for granted that he's like a Fruit Loop or something, but no, he's a genius. He was a musical genius. He yeah. really understood yeah. music. You know? It's like Picasso. They see the freaky paintings and they're like, I can do that. It's like, no, no, no. He can draw a perfect portrait. Oh, yeah. Like, Tiny Tim can play a portrait. He can play. He can sing, too. Yeah. Yeah? yeah. He was great. He was a really good inspiration to me. How cool is and he that? taught me about the village. I was in Tampa and quite happy there, sort of, until Tiny Tim started telling me about the village and how the clubs and all the music and how like moms and the papas are down the street, you know what I mean? And, like this was where the music was. Yeah. And he goes, you know, you, that's where you should really be is a village. So I came here as a teenager and I kind of started coming every summer and then eventually I moved here. Wow. So tell me about Anna Nicole Smith. Did you know her? I did not know her. I, I did not know Anna Nicole Smith, even though she's awesome. I, um, I saw a screen of this film before they put the music in uh, with the director, uh, David Chincola, and after, he was a fan of the bongos and my early stuff, and he, you know, he said, oh, do you have a song maybe that could be good for this movie? And I didn't really think of, I didn't think I had one, but I said, but maybe I could be your musical supervisor. So I brought Moby in to do a song, oh, oh, and yeah. the Scissor Sisters, and myself, and we did the music for this movie. There's a few extra songs that they, was already sort of in place that I didn't bring in, but most of it I brought in for him. We made a great soundtrack for this album, for this movie, and I wrote, then I did write a song for her called She's a Real Live Wire. And that's on, people can find that on iTunes. It's, she's a real live wire. It's about Anna Nicole Smith, and it's one of my solo singles from last year. Wow. Yeah. It's in the movie, too. Is a lyric in another song? She's a real live wire. You're singing my song. You're I've heard song. that. You're singing my song. I've heard that. I have. I know there's a line. I want royalties now. I've heard it in a song, man. <laughs> I know it. It's true. It's going to hit me when, when, when I leave late. Like. Regardless, I was inspired to write it for her, so. Did there, I just saw some Lifetime movie the other night. There's an Anna Nicole Smith story. There's a lot on her. There's a lot to write about. She did a lot of stuff. Yeah, she really did. Supreme wow. Court on down. I mean, she, you know, she did it all. 
she did, and her daughter is like rolling in the cha cha cha. I'm sure. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, good. I'm glad you used that. Yeah. <laughs> See, everyone else got those things before, like earlier on in the interview, but you haven't given me any sound effects. Oh, we'll get you some. All right. All right. <laughs> oh, wait, I'm trying. Oh, oh, there's Anna Nicole. Oh, that's she what she had to that's do. That's what happens. Exactly. I mean. Think anyway, the film is a documentary about the making of her last film, and it's pretty entertaining and, and, and very interesting. Wow. And it's a lot to say about the media the way they were hounding her too. That's part of what was going on, is she was actually being continuously hounded. Yeah. By all the media. It was nuts. Yeah, a little much. Yeah. Right? It was a little much. A right? little much. So um Wow, there's just so many things with you, Richard Brown. And you've seen me play. I have several times. Yeah. Um, long, long ago. The bottom line. Um, but as a bomb you almost saw the bomb that was in the bomb incarnation, yeah. But a club and then a club down in Neptune, New Jersey. Oh, is that me solo or the bomb is again? I at the Green Parrot. It's just you. Yes. The Green Parrot. Yes, the Green Parrot. Yeah, I yes. love that club. That was a great beach. And, and Fez. Fez was probably oh, me Fez. solo, yeah? Yeah. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. So, so you've seen all kinds of different things I've done. I have, and I want to ask you, do you ever come to California? Once in a while. I've been invited. You can invite me if you want to. Okay, you yeah. Know, <laughs> I, you know, last time I was there, I did a book tour, and this was really funny. The book tour, I, when Frontman came out, yeah. I'm not a good reader, for one thing, I don't see very well to read a book in my face. Plus, I play guitar and I couldn't do both. Right. And Joyce DeWitt toured with me, reading my book. She was from it. Oh, wow! Yeah. Yeah. I mean, what what more can you ask for? <laughs> There's just nothing better than doing a book tour with Joyce DeWitt reading your book. Yeah. Right? Wow. Yeah. I played guitar, she read. I was like, okay, this I'm in heaven. And we did a tour, and we did it all over California with that. Okay. But thanks, I loved it. But I have not gone, I don't play there as often as I'd like to, okay. you know? I'm a, it's such an East Coaster, and I do, I tour up and down the East Coast all the time. Yeah. And, um, When's your next show? I'm going to be playing, I'm, well, during the summer I'm just finishing up uh, other projects, but I just play South by Southwest. I got as far west as Austin because I play, I did a tribute to Lou Reed uh, with Alejandro Escobedo as my co-producer. Uh, he's great. Too. Yeah, we did a four hour tribute to Lou Reed at Amazing at the uh, Paramount Theater wow. with the Lucinda Williams and Suzanne Vega. And it's like one after another, boom, yeah. boom, boom. There's like 21 different singers doing Lou's music. Wow. Yeah. What did wow. you sing? I sang two songs. I sang "I'll Be Your Mirror." I knew that. And yes, I, I've been doing that. I've been doing that for years, and then yeah. I love it. And I've done. I did it with Lou. With I had a video of Lou reciting it to me for me on the screen behind me as a poem. Uh -huh. We did that at Carnegie Hall in 2008 like that. And so I recreated it for his tribute. And then I did All Tomorrow's Parties, which was really mm -hmm. sung by Nico, but of yeah. course Lou wrote it. And I, that's my new single on iTunes also. Good for you. Yeah. It's a great song. Thank you. I love those songs. And people can, if you're interested in finding these songs, just go to my website, or I You can find me anywhere, really. iTunes, you know, or Facebook, or Twitter. You know, I, I used to work for a company called Baroni Makeup. Did you ever hear of them? They spelled yeah. it just like you. Really? Mm -hmm. I didn't know that. Was yeah. it good? They were alright. They had like crazy, like wacky colors in the eighties, like white mascara. And they started all these green, yellow nail polishes cool. that you couldn't, you know, find. And you, now it's all mainstream. But right. they yeah. had a store in Soho called Barone. But they said Baroni, but it was, really, it was written the same way. Mine's always been Barone. I don't know. It's just like Barone. And when I, when I go to Europe, they think I'm German or something because it sounds like Baron. But you know. Oh, isn't it Italian? It's Italian all the way. Yeah, it's Sicilian. It's Italian. Yeah, exactly. I'm Italian, Sicilian, yeah. So what's your favorite restaurant in New York? <laughs> I have too many favorite restaurants in New York. What's your My favorite? favorite today is the, is the Empire Diner because I was there last night. Oh, that works. <laughs> that works. It's a good one. Yeah. yeah. There's a lot of, I mean, New York is so full of good restaurants. It so is. It's, when I, you know, I'm on the spot, I just love, I love so many. It's hard to pick. Yeah. I'm sure. I'm sure. Yeah. I know. It's the, it's the city of, Good food, right? You know, when I was in Florida visiting folks for two weeks, and there's like, there's, you know, there's just no choice. The food's there. Like, Tampa. Tampa's, you know, yeah. all the garden. I've been to Tampa. Oh, really? <laughs> <laughs> like, salad, right? You go to the Columbia. I'd like some nice restaurants. There are a few, I should. I don't mean to diss it. In the pretty know. little area. I'm just a snobbish Keyboard. New Yorker. Yeah, I'm, yeah, a, snobbish yeah, Yorker yeah. I'm a snobbish yeah. New Yorker, and Good I just, I can't help it. <laughs> so it is a national park. It is national Kennedy Park. Kennedy Park. Kennedy Park. Kennedy Park. And strawberry parfait day, and we'd like to, you know, stimulate your taste buds right now too. I'm always into being stimulated. Yes. Yeah. Which one? Is, what is this? That's a strawberry parfait. Now, can you share a skeleton from your closet? Everything you've said is so a uh, like beautifully wonderful. Did you ever do anything naughty? Of course, I did many. I still do things that are naughty. Like like what? Can you tell us something? <laughs> There's a lot of things, and you know, there's a lot in my book. 
Oh, but I, I was when when you were asking this question to others, I, I was thinking of one thing that might you might find amusing. Is that? and it's a child, it's a school thing. I think you mentioned okay. you mentioned yeah. something in school. You know, I got I guess the biggest time I got in trouble. There were two in elementary school. Was one time I was a safe when I was a safety patrol. Um, Wait, you were the safety patrol? I was a safety patrol. So did you wear the vest? Yeah, yeah, the orange, the bright orange vest. This is in back. Tampa? Yeah. And Wait, of course, as if there's any traffic in Tampa. There's no, there's no traffic. <laughs> was Anita Bryant anywhere here? Oh my god, I hope not. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Isn't she famous in Tampa or infamous in Tampa? All through Florida, she's pretty famous. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Infamous in a very bad way, yeah. Um, I guess I got um, the most trouble in elementary school when instead of putting up the American flag, I made my own flag that said sex. Oh, wow. You were ahead of your time. I thought so. I was in fifth grade. And I just, it's just an S-E-X in big letters, and I put it up the flagpole to see what happened. Then I went to class. What color so was it? It was a black and white flag. Yeah. And then I got called to the principal's office got maybe about 45 minutes later when they noticed. But it flew for a while. They knew that you did it. I was the one who was putting the flag up. Yeah. You're a real life liar. <laughs> But I mean, that was my flag. Come on. Wow, that's cool. So what happened to the flag? Did they confiscate it? The flag went away. Um, Did they see? They wanted it. Yeah, they're probably still flying it. They probably yeah. are. I wow. hope so. I Do hope you so. want to push a button? Sure. I'll just randomly pick one. This is good luck. We're yeah. at a Greek wedding right now. Oh, yeah. Exactly. Oh, wow. Yeah. That's what we like to think. Exactly. So, um, is there anything we missed right now? Where's your book, and, and where can people, people get can that? find the book? On you can go to my website. I'll just say book. You know, just it's a very simple website. RichardBrown.com. You can get, my, get on my mailing list, please. And then you visit book. You can visit the music. It's just very simply laid out on the website. And, I love websites. And, 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 and what does simple. it take for someone musically to like? Can they, people send you music? Like, what would you listen to it? And I do get a lot more music sure that I can possibly listen I'm to. I'm sure you do. It's, it's a little bit difficult because I'm involved with my own projects and I produce other artists who are always sending me their songs. Yeah, so how does somebody, I gets, never how does artist, somebody I, get so lucky to work with you? They have to they, they know. There's all kinds of different ways. Huh? <laughs> Sex. Does that work? <laughs> Listen, I think I'm it, 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 I'm open to anything, but the thing is Ooh. that um, it usually has to do some with the music. Yeah, of course. Well, I would hope so. Yeah. Exactly. <laughs> the music has to be somewhat good. Yeah. But you know, I'm a fun-loving guy. Right. Yeah. Is there is there any genre you prefer? No, I like all genres. I like electronic lately, but I like all kinds of stuff. You do? Yeah, I mean, if it's good, it's good. I don't really like to... Especially, what do you think of the American Idol phrase? I hate that. I know. Thank you! Yeah, exactly. I hate it, I just think it's not. It's a phony piece of shit. Yeah. All of them, yeah. right? Yeah. So they're just marketing the judges anyway. It's right? not, there's nothing real about it. I, I like what's real. Right, yeah. I like real things, real audience response, real communication with an audience, real truth. Like real art. Real art. So do you think and art be, is getting lost? Yeah. I mean, it could be. I love some certain rappers. I love because it's so real. I just. I love it too. I like I lyrics. Like, I like writing. the words. Yeah, and me poets, too. Yeah. Me too. And you know, if, if it's if it's a rock band, if they got a sound and a groove that I like, and I love that. I mean, I really go in all different directions with music. That's cool. Yeah. And I like classical. I like mixing classical instruments with pop. That's what that's what Kublai Halo was about. That's why it made a, a some noise for me that came out after the bongos because I was using classical yeah. instruments. You know. Right. Nice. I, I would love to sit Do I know somebody else who did that once? I'm sure the left bank did that. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. That's orchestral <laughs> pop. No, and that's, so I, I tip my hat if I was wearing one. And um, I, I, yeah, hat. I say, you know, that it, that was it's for the Beatles, you know, the, a lot of the, the, it was it was something that's evolved and ELO, come along. Right. ELO certainly did, yeah. I was part of that. Right. You know? mm -hmm. Wow. But we, they called it chamber pop because I had broke it down to just the most minimal instruments, and we were playing clubs in New York like that, you know. But that's how that's what I did. Well, and like, you can come back anytime you ever want because I think it's like an infinite amount of stuff that you could talk about, and we want to hear you play next. Time. Next time I'll play a song for you. All right. I was going to do Jolene by Dolly Parton. Ah, oh, wow. Miley has done a cover. I heard that she did that. Yeah. Yeah. Because yeah. Dolly is. Dolly is her godmother. That's right. Yeah. yeah. It makes sense. It does make sense, sense right? Pass yeah. that torch, right? Absolutely. I know, exactly. I know. The well, I want to thank you for having me on your show. Oh, well, I want to thank you for coming by, and um, I hope we get to meet again. That sounds good. That sounds great. Come yeah. right up. Come on my website sometime. I'm going to. All right. Absolutely. Thank, thank you, you. bro. Yeah.